Is this the man who wrecked the buffet at the Gutters Club? Hey, <laughs> Kevin Goatee here, folks. Listen, we've had an amazing stretch of guests picking amazing films that people love, made a lot of money, critically acclaimed. This week, boy, that shriek sure is intact because Brittany Miggs comes on to take on what some people call one of the greatest comedies of our time, and that is Annie Hall. Yes, the film that inspired many, many women in improv to dress like that, unfortunately. And, well, there they are. We're going to see if that nebbish Woody Allen has got it still up his sleeves after 50-some years. Is it 50? I don't even look. Dave Quist from the Blockbuster Mentality is going to join me as guest co-host. And, boy, oh, boy, we're going to make heads or tails out of this. So let's see what's up with Annie Hall. I hate white people. You people are rednecks. I hate rednecks. That means I'm enjoying this shit. Dave Quist of the Blockbuster Mentality Podcast. How goes it, sir? Going well, KG. And I'm going to guess Django Unchained. That is not Django Unchained. Britt Miggs from Strong Island. What's up, Britt? What is up? Do you know what oh. quote that film or what movie that quote is from? No, but Dave just got it. So well, I think I, is it Blazing Saddles? No, damn it! <laughs> the answer is Forty Eight Hours. Uh, wouldn't have guessed that. Yep, I need rewatch to get these. Rewatch it. <laughs> you, you tell you what, you taking Israel's spot in the I can't get these quotes right department, <laughs> nailing it. <laughs> Kevin Goatee, Dave Quiz, Brittany Miggs, we are here. Thanks again for coming to Gutting the Sacred Cow Podcast, the best movie review slash movie debate podcast we have out there on the intranets. Why? Because we invite a guest to pick a film that they find overrated or hate and try to convince us to see their argument. But here's a twist. The film must meet one of these criteria. Why they beloved? Critically acclaimed or a financial success. Why do I say this? Because the YouTube algorithm needs all this dumb information at the top. Hence why. Brittany Miggs has chosen a film. I can't believe Dave Quist. It has taken this long to get to this film, let alone one of this director's films. Oh, yeah. Annie Hall from Woody Allen. We are now probably at our 200th or thereabouts 200th episode in. And no Woody Allen films quite yet. I am surprised. As a guy from the Northeast, surprised that someone does not try to come on here with pitchforks and whatnots about yeah, Woody Allen. for the year that it came out as well. Well, we will yes. discuss that. We yeah. will discuss that. So Brittany Miggs, excellent selection. Annie Hall, a little, little, little bit of numbers here for you folks. 1977, the year after our Lord and Savior KG, Kevin Goatee, was born. A <laughs> $4 million budget, a box office haul of... 44 million bucks. Turn that into 2023 money. $20 million budget. $224.3 million. That is an 11 time ROI. Oh, yeah. Guess what? It beat out Star Wars for best picture. <laughs> Let's Thanks. all let that simmer for about 45 minutes and just do mm -hmm. quotes. You know. Those who can't do, teach. Those who can't teach, teach Jim. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest line of this film. That's great. I, that's a good one. Next one, you have black soap. Are you joining a minstrel show? Also, like, okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Here in LA, they don't throw out their garbage. They make TV shows out of them. A third <laughs> little good quote. That's all the quotes I have from this film. How about you, Brittany Makes? What jumps out at you quote-wise? Anything? Quote wise, uh, I'm like, there's there's that whole spiel when he's in the movie theater that everyone loves. Um, but also a uh, fun fact slash quote is when he points out the Truman Capote lookalike. It is Truman Capote, which I guess is cool. That's like maybe the coolest thing about the film. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone stole one of my five fun facts, but I'll re-raise you. Yeah, that's fine. How did you know? Not only is that Truman Capote, do you know that's also Marshall McLuhan? I didn't know that. Yep. Didn't know that. Yep. All right. And not hey. only did I not know that, I didn't. I don't even know who he is. How about that? <laughs> the message is the medium. Did you not take a communications class and film with all, all of our I film didn't major want to nerds? See that either. So I, thanks, Dave. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> really? I thought one of you two would have picked that up. Damn, especially another comic. What was your, everyone's degrees in communications, right? No. All right. I guess film and TV. 
I did. Yeah, I did a uh, radio and television minor in film. <laughs> and look where we are now. Here we are now. Yeah. Dave Quist, any quotes jump out at you? Uh, yeah, I like uh, the relationship is like a shark. You have to, it has to keep moving. Otherwise, it dies. I like that a lot. Um, this is a dead I, shark. Yeah. Yeah, this is a dead shark. Yeah. I, I have to admit, I love, was it my, my grandmother named never gave gifts she was too busy being raped by cossacks i just i had i definitely laughed at that mm. <laughs> yeah mm. um when i it, for this was i wanted to call this quote out because it's absolutely wrong there's something who said I, I i don't want to move to a city where the cultural advantage is be able to make a right turn on a red light you can't i don't know if this is still around no is that you can you nope. know that nope. is a that's a human rights violation to not be able to make a right on red. Adam yeah. Carolla rails about that on his podcast every single day. Down here, down here in Florida, they've got a whole thing. No one even you just you just take the right. You don't even stop. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, Jersey has the right turn red arrow. Sometimes, sometimes they get cute and say no right turn on red. We all blow through that unless there's a camera there. But we know the camera is horseshit. We blow through it anyway. The uh, last one for me, um, it's I think it's a longer quote, but it's when uh, when uh, Alfie and um, uh, Annie are they're out and there's this logic of let's just kiss now and get it over with. That way we relieve the tension. I just I love that. <laughs> That's perfect. I, you know what? I Good call, because I heard that as a I guess guy growing up like, hey, you know what you should do? We should just make out in order. We should just you know bang right now and get it over with. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so that was the genesis was probably this film. Yeah, definitely. It's okay. sound logic. Like we're clear, we're we're attracted. So let's not wait for that awkward moment. Let's let's do it now and then move on with our night. And then you know we'll see what happens later. I like the honesty. I was actually one time I was on a, a date with a gal. She says, "Why are we bullshit? We should just be getting a room upstairs." I go, well, <laughs> I go, all right. Party <laughs> I mean, on, works. Wayne. Party on, Garth. That was a uh, that was a fun little fun little go. Yeah, I was um I was talking to someone that I was interested in and. We were talking about what a big crush we had on each other. And they were like, do you want to just make out about it? And I liked that. I thought that was a cool way to say it. Oh, do you want to make out about it? Make out yeah. about it. Yeah, I like that. Little, yeah. I like yeah. that. And it, it, did it did it progress toward uh, later stages of the. Uh... Yeah. What's the full story here? Yeah. <laughs> Don't bury the lead. <laughs> God damn it. Sorry. It's the person I'm currently dating. I hate to be. Oh. I hate to be like that, but yeah. <laughs> She's like, next thing you know, I was bent over the bathroom sink in the club with his hair wrapped around his left hand and the right hand was firmly spanking my ass crack with yeah. uh, with a paper towel holder. That was fun times. Brittany oh, Miggs. Move. Brit Miggs, what do you have for quotes? Anything? For more quotes from the movie? Yeah, anything? Yeah. I don't know. I'm you don't like, have, like a whole list? No, from Sidewalks of New York. No. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm like, I hate this movie. So you don't I'm say like, you what you don't say. Yeah. And that's why I'm here. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm not. He, this is the thing about this movie. Woody Allen has so many of these long monologue rants that I'm like, how do you get quotables from it? Like, it's just these long, long things that he's saying about God knows what. Right. Um, yeah. So those are I'm like, let me see what else I got. I don't know. If you don't have quotes, listen, if you don't have any quotes, that's fine. No, yeah, don't force deal. no, no, no. This is the you know, square peg round hole. If it's not there, it's not there. Just, you know, take the <laughs> yeah. completion. Take the completion. Five fun facts. The four. original title Four. thanks, Dave Quest. I appreciate that. Sorry. I love live editing. <laughs> this film was originally titled anhedonia which is a psychological condition that refers to the inability to experience pleasure however alan decided to change the name to annie hall as he felt it was more fitting for the roller coaster these titles were thrown out and i and you'd think that these are like just you know snl parody ones no they're not a roller coaster named desire it had to be jew <laughs> me <laughs> me, me that and, one is pretty good. That's yeah, more that's appropriate good. to the story. I think yeah. that's like oh, half sure of his is. focus. <laughs> how about uh how about this one? Me and my goy also right in that uh right in that oh. pocket. And a couple of somewhat other bland options by Alan, like anxiety and Alvy and me. Alvy and me is honestly, in my opinion, more apt because it's called Annie Hall and she's the titular role. But is, you know, and this is one of my points, you know, she's not a fully fleshed out character. It's all about Alvy. So it should right. have been Alvy and me. Right. 
By the way, as a woman, would you ever see yourself in the throes of passion calling out someone's name like, I don't know, Alvy? No. I think that'd be a deal breaker. A hundred percent. And he has the women- balls. Sorry, he has the balls to criticize someone named David before it being a biblical name. I mean, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> right. And Alvy. Alvy. Yeah. I wonder That's how like- he came to that. Like how Woody came to name that character that do you have a fun fact about it I'm no i don't no 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 fun fact on that it's oh. like that's the, the, those names like let's say if, if, I, if i had to if i had to venture guesses for you ladies it would be something like dennis leon um stewart and <laughs> uh, maybe mortimer <laughs> okay i was hooking up with a guy and when i say that we went on a couple of dates and I, I kind of couldn't get past the fact that his name was Bart. Oh, did you go? I caramba, you're a shitty kisser. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I'm like Bart Simpson. Can we yeah. call you something else? Don't have a cow, man. Yeah. Oh, Leon. That's too yeah. bad. I mean, we'll women. Go by your middle name. Yeah. What? Is, what was his middle name? Homer. <laughs> didn't didn't get that far. But yeah, probably Marge or Homer. No. <laughs> That's terrible. Like for women, like Brenda, Ethel, all those old. I actually knew a girl. I knew her, and I have an aunt, Brenda. So this girl's name is Brenda. And one of my, uh, I was a drug rep for Merck, and she was in my class. And she's like, she's cute. Hi, I'm Brenda. I go, oh boy. Oh, this is going to be a steep hill to climb if I choose to. <laughs> Anywho's number two, including the original scripts, fantasy scenes, and dream sequences, were Alvy and Annie's time hopping visits to the Garden of Eden. The French mm. Resistance, a surprise, Nazi Germany, parodies of the film Angel of My Shoulder and Invasion of the Body Snatchers, a guided tour of hell featuring Richard Nixon, and a basketball game between the New York Knicks and philosophers like Frederick Nietzsche and Soren Kierkegaard. Wow. This is like if Bill and Ted decided to get on acid and get a lot more nebbishy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insane. Number three, despite its four Academy Awards for Best Picture, Director, Screenplay, and Actress, not Actor, cultural legacy Annie Hall has yet to win over Alan. The director insists that the film is merely a shell of his grander original vision. In the end, I had to reduce the film just to Diane Keaton and me and just that relationship he once noted. So I was quite disappointed in the end of that movie as I was with other films of mine that were very popular. I swore that this would be the the crown jewel in his filmography, floored really? to hear him say that. You would. You already took number four from me. Thank you very much. <laughs> this one, this one made me say, "Boy, women in the seventies were stupid." Annie's outfits, which caused a brief fashion rage in the seventies, were Diane Keaton's own clothes. Wow. I have notes, but who cares what I think? <laughs> who cares what I think? I care what the herd, which are a group, our group of fans have to say about this and have questions so it's time to get to ask a gutter gutter. at lord snurts i'm skipping the question and the predictions this week he gives us our predictions of scores every week never heard of this movie and don't have time to watch it today happy gutting this guy watches all the films lord snurts he's never heard of annie hall i was that's crazy isn't it yeah he's never heard of it strange yeah but i like the commitment to yeah to watch it (laughs) Like ahead of time, he's gonna he, watch yeah. whatever movie you're doing. That's, he does that. It's a great. He does fan. it a lot. Oh man, he flies and he's when he's when he's a kamikaze loyalist, which I love. Great. My his follow up post. There's a blank spot in my movie watching experience named Woody Allen, and <laughs> is the only film I can think of starring him. Ants. Not gonna lie, love ants. Woody Allen can have ants. I love that movie. You know what? You know, here's my problem. I'm just an either or kind of fella, and I'll explain. I love Looney Tunes. I despise Tom and Jerry. I love A Bug's Life. I hated Ants. I am pro Disney, okay. anti DreamWorks. I hate Shrek. Hated it the first one. It's I I I, I have these. I'm all Yankees. I hate obviously the Red Sox. Gi- Giants right. over Jets. Rangers over Islanders. Uh, so on and so forth. It's just I'm always I'm all in or I'm all out. Like there's no Switzerland <laughs> with, with with myself here. So ants right. I never saw. I just I go DreamWorks. Ah, it's probably gonna suck. So here's the thing. I love a Bug's Life. Ants okay. is definitely subpar, and I think it came out in the same year. Or something, it did. It yeah. did. Which is crazy. Um, not so crazy, but anyways, I I will say though, it's a it's a good it's cute. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, that's not a ringing endorsement from either of you. So no, not at all. 
my you guess. You don't have to go. Yeah, don't rush home to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> at uh, at Jill loves Cam would Chris? Right, let me do this right. At Jill loves Cam, would Christopher Walken be Christopher Walken without Annie Hall? Pretend I wrote that in Christopher Walken speaking style. So that was my shitty Christopher Walken impression. Yeah, that was. So don't judge. One I do better ones than that, but the Walken I can't really do. So. <laughs> Christopher Walken. I can't do it. I can't. Hey. I'm not even trying. But but that was pretty good. So I know I, I know he's very young in this movie. And might I say, quite a looker. Um but really? He looks like an alien at, at any point in his life. <laughs> I think he's cute in this. Is it his first? Like, let me I, I should look at I should look that up. Deer Hunter was before or after this quiz. I think it was after this. It was the year after, so there might yeah. be something to that. Um, I don't know when he was cast for that, but that was definitely his breakout role. Um, it looks like he was in some, you know, like TV shows and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. this this looks like it was definitely his first big role. I think, so yeah, I, I would I would say this one that that's a good question, and I think probably yes would be my answer. My guess too. Here's my my answer to that. I think that if it wasn't this movie, it would have been something else. Christopher Walken is going to Christopher Walken and he would have been a success regardless of Annie Hall. At Delvin Cox, I'm going to keep it a thousand, not a hundred, a thousand. Woody <laughs> Allen is the most overrated white man in history. Nothing this man <laughs> makes is good, nor should be celebrated. He is the epitome of mediocre in every way. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, Brody Miggs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Lord Smith said, that's a high bar for the most overrated white man in history. Delvin Cox writes back, well, there's another that comes to mind, but I'm a chill. Okay. I'm I wonder who that was. I, I, me too. To, yeah. My guess, Jerry Seinfeld. Next. Huh. That's my guess. I have no uh, in, uh, insight on that. Sure. At Ken Bjorn Turner, Bjorn the Viking. Not a question, but well wishes to Brittany Miggs for the gutting. I don't think I've ever seen a Woody Allen movie that I have liked. Another statement, but as you stated, it's a so statement. This, so. this is voting well for me. Yeah, I'm, crowd is I with thought, you. I, I thought people were going to come at me. Listen, you should have been here for the conflict. You should have been here for the Shawshank episode, and you should have been here for the Godfather episode. Oh wait, the oh. Shawshank episode is out. Godfather will be next week. Those uh -oh. comments were encyclopedial. Yeah, and uh -oh. I yelled quite a bit in that episode. <laughs> I, I did too. <laughs> oh at Nemer, oh, sorry, at Brandon Oglesby at Newark Night. Is this Woody's best film or his most nostalgic film? Hmm. I, uh, I'm going to admit something. Please. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen a lot of his work. I Can you share like, which ones you have? Let's let's make sure, and I'll I'll look and see exactly um, what I have seen. But the reason I even saw Annie Hall, like not, you know, maybe I would have seeked it out on my own because it is so iconic and it's heralded as this amazing film. But I, I was uh, forced to watch it in, in my film. Minor. Film class. <laughs> ah, me too. <laughs> yeah. It was not something that I, I uh, looked looked for on my own. Um, but let's see Woody Allen's. As you look it up, I will say, as I think about my film curriculums of stuff I had to watch, I think 20, 25 percent success rate of films that they made us watch. I go, all right, that's good. Yeah. So it's a tw batting 250 gets you benched in the pros. So there you go. Film teachers change well, your curriculum. Like it stinks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man, I he basically made like a movie a, a year. Um, I would just say, well, while, while, while Britt's looking that up, Crimes and Misdemeanors is his best. Um, to me, I will disagree. I have it in my notes section later on, but uh, okay. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, no, here's the thing. I feel like people are going to come after me because I don't think I've seen anything else. People, I would say that I would say the big ones. I mean, Bullets Over Broadway. I think won something, right, Quest? That was um, what's her face who won that? Was that God damn it, Mira Sorvino? Didn't she win for that? For some reason, that stands out to me. I think so, but I, I love Mira Sorvino. Yeah, I'm not hey, sure. Here's the thing, though. Um, yeah, no, Manhattan is a big one. I know people talk about that. Yeah. Not a know. fan. His oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Match Point, Midnight in Paris. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, Blue Jasmine. Mm -hmm. I think Midnight in Paris was like, I feel like when I was like, all right, I'm not gonna like go and patronize any more of his movies, which is like another thing, you know. I mean, right. Whatever, but yeah. So I don't know. Last one at Nemirovsky. What is more likely, Brittany Miggs guts the sacred cow, or Woody Allen as Ronan Farrow's father? 
<laughs> I was waiting for one of those jokes to go, come on, there's one of them. That's a come spirit. On. <laughs> that is going to close Ask a Gutty. You're right, Brittany. This one was very, uh, very easy going. Usually yeah, people to get... are on my side. Yeah, people are really excited. They're like, well, or... I think I think uh, complacency of not asking questions more of like, that's me really just showing my disdain for Woody Allen. That's just my, <laughs> yeah. my yeah. two cents. And now, kids, hey, listen, no one ever listens to the end of the podcast. We do our plugs at the beginning. Pretty Megs, what are you up to? What are you working on? Shout it out for all the good folks to catch you up. Yes, absolutely. Um, depending on when this comes out, but I'm pretty sure it'll be before uh, this happens. I run a bi-monthly show at Union Hall in Brooklyn. It's called mm. Me Cats Comedy Presents Sunday Sauce. It's a really long, fun name, um, but it's on Sunday, September 24th. At 5 p.m., we've always got a great lineup of comics. It's always really fun. We always premiere a new sketch at the top of the show. It's a blast, and you should come. Cool, the gang. How about your socials? Socials at Britty Migs across everything. So B R I T T Y M I G S. That's on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Sorry, X. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, all of it. I heard if you call it Twitter, he's going to challenge you to a cage fight after he beats up Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Quisp, what do you got going on besides a good old blockbuster mentality podcast? That is most of my life, and that's why I'm here. Uh, follow me at Dave underscore Quisp, the show at Blockbuster Cast. I think most everyone knows me by now, but do uh, you have a great audience? Love this show, and I'd uh, be honored if anybody uh, crossed over and checked out our stuff. We've got a ton of episodes. Um, next one coming up, we're looking at a flopbuster, John Carter. I think that's our next uh, next episode in the queue. So look for this week. I love that. Yeah, I'm on a couple of those, so it'd be, it'd be an easy little way to, to to ingratiate yourself in that universe, and it's worth it. Those guys are fun. At Kevin Go T K V I N G O O T W E, gutting the sacred cow dot com, where you can get yourself a sweet ass hat, mug, bag, shirt, even cell phone holder. Yeah, I know they sell those things. It's crazy. <laughs> At GTSC Podcast on Twitter, gutting the sacred cow podcast on Instagram and TikTok, and whenever I get off my lazy ass threads and i got a blue sky invite is it worth it we'll find no. out threads no? is dead already is it cool yeah. i didn't even start that's, that's nice and know. lastly don't forget fantasy football season is coming up fantasy football jibber jabber on youtube in the very near future it'll be uh it'll be off i guess end of august we'll start and then of course weeks one through the super bowl get ready to make some free money and know who to start or play in fantasy football dave quist Oh, this is going to be a joy. I can tell by re reading, reading your horrible poker face. I think we should let Brittany. I don't know. I'm just pull that out of my ass just to kind of get some reaction out of you. Let's have <laughs> let's walk Brittany Miggs right on down the gutting aisle and allow her to do what she has come on to do. And that, of course, is gut, gut the sacred, sacred cow. cow. Yes. <laughs> All right. That was close. Pretty good, pretty good. Well, you got the hand motion going this time. That gives See, me I'm like, I'm, a, I'm like a symphonic conductor. Yeah, I, 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 I need yeah. How about my uh, my hair scratch? I can't show up. It's on the green screen. There you go. Mm. All right, Brittany, take it away. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take you through all my points. I don't know how much how much time I have. I'm just gonna take as much it as you want. As much as you want. Amazing. First <laughs> off, I and I'm sure someone would agree with me. So fucking pretentious. So preachy. Enough. I'm like in the first couple of minutes, that's already how I feel. Uh, hilarious that he tries to be upset about other people's pretentiousness in this movie when the movie itself is the pinnacle of pretentiousness. Uh, imagine if you will, a movie about a female protagonist that's a two-time divorcee pushing 40, pretentious, overly yeah, intelligent, whatever, uh, do you think that it would be heralded as the greatest, one of the greatest comedies of all time? I doubt it. All right. I mean, thinks not. I think it's a product of the time, a time when Woody Allen was considered a genius because I think we didn't have a ton of other talent around. That's maybe what I think. Uh, here's another point. If I wanted to hear a neurotic Jewish guy rant incessantly, I'd go home for Yom Kippur. All right. <laughs> or go to any open mic in, in the city. <laughs> God damn you. I had that in my notes about the whole... You're Jewish, Brittany Miggs? I'm halfsies. <laughs> oh, you're a pizza bagel. I get it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a pizza bagel. Yeah. Gotcha. 
damn it, you took my one liner. <laughs> I have so many stand up jokes written in here. I go, I know she's going to get them, but right out of the gate, you take one of them about fuck. All right, listen, it is yeah. your time. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Continue. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're all supposed to be so grateful to, for getting to listen to his ramblings. Like, oh, yes, thank you for teaching me something, you beautiful, balding man. <laughs> um I, yeah and i'm like I'm he's not attractive no i here wait i'm like i'm gonna skip ahead to one of my points which is that i think he made himself the main character because it's like in what world and i know that they did date in real life but in what world would anyone be attracted to woody allen <laughs> it's it, like he is with so many women that are completely out of his league and i'm like yeah of course you cast yourself anyways the titular, titular role of, I just like saying tit a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's like Why not? Titular. I know. It loves that word. <laughs> the titular role of Annie Hall is not a fully fleshed out character. She is simply there to react to Woody jerking himself off for being such a tortured genius for 90 minutes. She is a sidekick at best. Um, he's emotionally abusive and we're supposed to see it as charming. You know, he belittles her. He never cares to examine her needs or desires. He, you know, makes fun of her, all, all that stuff. Um, then getting into some of the flashback scenes, knowing what we do about Woody Allen, can we really separate the art from the artist expressing a healthy sexual curiosity at six years old? Should have said that as one of my favorite quotes. Um, <laughs> it, it seems he never really stopped seeing young women as sexual objects. He doesn't know why he can't kiss a girl at six or say marry his stepdaughter at 56. All right. <laughs> um, I think that the movie does that satirical thing of being aware of Alvi's narcissism and saying the quiet part out loud, but then it's just, it doesn't subvert anything really because it doesn't redeem itself later on. It doesn't say like, oh, this is a bad thing. Yes, he doesn't win in the end. You know, they, they don't uh, stay together, they break up, whatever, but still i feel like he makes out okay you know he 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 kind of gets out scot free so it's like he's rewarded for being this shitty narcissist character i don't know so so like it says it's satirical but is it um he he just talks at women and of course they have no idea what he's saying cuz he's so intelligent and they're just sex objects uh god when diane keaton annie hall calls him to kill a spider i'm like really way to reduce women to that um would and this i know you've mentioned this woody allen himself doesn't even like annie hall so why should we uh it's apparently autobiographical which i guess makes a lot of sense he's likely this insufferable in real life um and yeah this is my other point i guess if i was a filmmaker i'd cast myself and make it so i was getting with people so far out of my league we're not even playing the same game um <laughs> at least if he wanted to write this movie, he could have cast someone else to make it a little more believable. There were plenty of cute guys in the 70s he could have cast. Um, the best part of the movie is Annie Hall dumping him for the last time and also seeing a young, hot Christopher Walken. Um, and then my last note is just boring. I was bored. I was bored watching this movie. I don't feel like it's exciting enough to be called one of the greatest comedies of our time. I'm not, it wasn't a, a nonstop thrill ride. It wasn't, I wasn't laughing out loud the whole time. Kind of a snooze fest. Wow. That is the first <laughs> notes drive through gutting. Well, that, 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 that's all you have. Is that it? You saw it again, much time as you want. That's it. Okay, great. No, that's it. Exactly. Great. No, listen, <laughs> brevity is the soul yeah. of wit. Give me a one to 10. A one to 10? Yeah. Ugh. I'm like a three. Ooh. I have I, I I'm gonna say I'll, I'll say at the end, Dave. I, I I have a I have a premonition about that score. Three it is. Lock it in. Dave Quist from the Blockbuster Mentality Podcast. Come on down. Yeah. All right. So we know this thing is a pretty big financial su success, at least yeah. uh, in terms of return on investment. Uh, so this thing was a hit. It won. What four Oscars, best yep. picture, best directing, I think best maybe original screenplay. And I think Woody Allen, in fact, uh, the ugly little man was nominated for best actor. The ugly little man. <laughs> I think it, uh, Diane Keaton got best actor. And she won. Yeah. She did. And, yeah. Uh, and so actually, maybe we'll just start there. Um, 
I think whatever maybe misgivings you have on her being a fully fleshed out character, I think it's hard to deny her performance in this film. Yes. I find her so beautiful and charming and she's and I like her style. It's just quirky and weird. And I think I mean, not that a character is necessarily defined by her dress, but I think it did kind of speak to who she was. She was she was a bit of a mess. She was kind of a different person every day and she's she driving in the car she's totally confident in her ability she's swerving all over the road um and and i think even the spider thing was just a cry for help i think she was looking for any excuse because she missed him um I, know. I thought it was for sex but i could be wrong <laughs> yeah, it's just, maybe both who doesn't want that right i mean maybe woody allen is hot maybe it's just your taste but maybe uh, she has a thing for a little praying mantis gingers yeah, exactly. Um, and I think there's there's a lot of amusing moments in this film. There's a lot where I'm cracking up. I mean, we mentioned the the, the thing about the grandma getting raped by the Cossacks. That's just yeah. funny. <laughs> and, it's, and it's 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 subversive in its own way. Um, I like the style of, of storytelling. I like I like the breaking the fourth wall. I like um when they're sort of like uh time traveling with each other into into looking into their past into their family there's that one actually there's another quote i think it was a guy that annie hall some kind of hippie guy where he's like put your foot on my heart or kiss my heart oh, with yeah. your foot oh, or something yes. <laughs> yeah. it's my heart with your foot yeah <laughs> I like that it. Was, I think yeah, that was like that was like the uh the version of Animal House where he's the guitar player on the stairs. <laughs> I gave my love a cherry. Like those que <laughs> those queefy, like one of the existential musicians, actors, or whatever, trying to connect with women that way. Always and, and they didn't to some degree they did make their way into the 90s and 2000s, obviously. But mm -hmm. that that 70s that, that was so indicative of that time ago. I just flashback right to the scene animal house go oh one of the other, one of these other queefs can't stand these people okay <laughs> yeah 100 percent. yeah and those guys did they definitely resurfaced in the 90s yeah for yeah. sure um the other thing is this is absolutely whatever woody allen thinks about the movie upon reflecting um mm -hmm. this is absolutely a the singular vision of one man put on screen it's like when you watch a christopher nolan movie it's a christopher nolan movie this movie is 100 mm -hmm. woody allen and yeah. i kind of to me i kind of respect that like there's nothing where i felt like oh this was like a studio note or something unless you know he had to cut or whatever um this was his movie this was his story this was that's kind of a hell of an accomplishment for someone to you know to get the awards get sell the tickets to tell something so which really is a quite weird neurotic kind of a story to sell it to the entire nation and star yourself to get nominated for best actor. So I think that is quite an accomplishment. Um, and so I, I appreciate the movie for, for that. Well, um, Tommy Wiseau made a movie called The Room, and that's an accomplishment. But he, yeah, but he that did too. not win an Oscar or no, sell fifty million dollars. No. Although maybe he made it now with all the with the deals with the <laughs> with the parody movies. Yeah. Um. So I just I think that's just a point in its favor. Um. And uh, I like, you know, like there's like there, there's little jokes within here where I, where I can relate, like where he wants to go get away from the party and watch the Knicks game. That's me. That's me. Sure. <laughs> I got a baby on the way and I'm trying to negotiate for opening opening day for football. So I'm hoping oh, to be able to watch the game. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. <laughs> so just, That's why I had my daughter in June. So that way it's like, <laughs> Baseball is not really, it's not during the playoffs. It's not, it's not during football season. Like, all right, it's warm. She can go out in the pool. That's what's up. Yeah. I, I just, I couldn't get my boys to swim fast enough. So <laughs> she's coming in early September. Oh boy. Um, another, po another point in, in favor of this movie. Um, no one wears bras. And I, I think that should be appreciated, especially in 2023. Sure. <laughs> that was the 70s, but that's one thing from the 70s I wish that would still take place today. Yeah. Let's hang. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's most of what I got. Um, and, and I think there are some things that don't work. Uh, I would, I would really have to admit that, um, the neuroticism, much of what's going on with the character, I, I hate to argue against myself, but I, I have integrity here. Much of what's going on with the character is just not relevant to an audience today. I, I really can see yeah. why I can see how this movie, um, really appealed particularly to uh, to an urban audience that thought of themselves as cultured and smart um that just doesn't quite resonate today in that same way um so whether we can 
take that down a notch in terms of holding up now, but I, as, as a, as a cultural, as a, as sort of a snapshot into the culture, I get this movie, why it was so popular. Um, and it, and it really, as you mentioned 90 minutes, that's quick. Most movies now they could barely tell a story in two and a half hours. Um, so I appreciate the brevity. I really like the ending. I don't think he gets away with it. I think that's just him. He's just, as he, I mean, his, it's, there's a lot of self loathing and he's, what does he say? There's the terminally ill and the miserable or something. He's just, mm-hmm. he, he's consigned himself to be miserable. And, yeah. and he's kind of, it's like a fatalistic look at the world. I don't think this is, in a lot of ways, uh, KG, this is sort of like the say anything advice for girls. This, oh. this in a lot of ways, is, this is kind of like, don't be like Alvy Singer because <laughs> you yeah. will never get anywhere. Um, but it is, in its own way, you kind of can romanticize that like self tragedy. It's completely narcissistic, but I get it, um, kind of a thing. So yeah. that I think that's my, I think that's my defense. Okay. One to ten, Dave Quist. I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give it a six. I I, I do think this thing, as much as that. Look, in my film watching journey, I went into Annie Hall and I loved it the first time I saw it. Um, but I think with clearer eyes, because it's one of those. It's a it's a checklist movie. You got to watch it. Um. I think with clearer eyes and watching it um, now, a movie does have to hold up. And I don't think, I think large parts of this film just simply Uh-oh. do not. Yeah, I have to what, say it. What was your initial score? I would have given it a nine or a 10. I loved Get it. Get the I fuck out of here. I loved, I loved the lobster scene. Hey man, I'm all into the pretension. I mean, when you're learning about, when you're learning about decades old film and you want to see the greats and what they do, you're buying in. Yeah, I'm buying in just like that uh, New York intellectual in 1977 who thought this was the greatest movie they've ever seen. And it got, and it got, and it won best picture. I mean, that's kind of the mindset and I just don't think it works now. If it's, it's a, if that was a nine or a 10, what was star Wars or Pulp Fiction or the matrix or die? Those are all Hard? tens, man. I, you can't put that in the same category as this, even no if you way. defend it. That, that, oh, I, certainly. Oh, I, did, oh, I declare certainly shenanigans. Could. I declare you could, shenanigans. You could then, but I don't think you can now. I you don't think get, it, you you would have gotten laughed out of the building. Seventy seven. The only thing I could say about with comedies, <laughs> airplanes. Yeah, airplanes <laughs> after the fact. Uh, what are Blazing Saddles? Young Frankenstein. You can argue. Not a heavy comedy period, but to maintain and carry the torch for the top AFI one hundred or top comedies. Well, we're gonna get into it. These I mean, notes, hey, look, you don't I, have to. Look, this isn't. Sli- I'm sorry, Brett, I'll right. let you go quick. This is no, an intellect. No. It's an intellectual comedy. Whether whether you think sure. it's full of shit or not, it's a really well written. There is a, as I said, he's got a lot to say here. He's got a lot of lot of ideas. This isn't. This isn't like your typical rom com at all. In a lot of ways, it may be defined or redefined what that genre could be. Um, something more complicated. Something. I think he goes too far with it. But certainly, yeah. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. Say, I mean, even Blazing Saddles is hilarious, but there's not. I mean, it's not much there. It's la- I I ba- when I hear comedy, it's laughs per minute. That's what I'm basing That's, comedies are. Yeah, I'm a LPM. Like, I want to be really, really laughing out loud. And I think something like Blazing Saddles or Young Frankenstein, like you said, is is more comedy to me. Like, I guess, I don't know, this is considered a comedy, but I, it's I, to me, it almost falls into more dramedy. Right. Well, see, when you're smart, you can knowingly. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Is it, are you the same? Are you the same asshole who defends the lobster as well? No, I don't like that movie at all. Oh, it's the same thing. It's a smart, dark comedy. Look, I was, I was a pretentious. Ah, I'm moving away from my pretentious snobness, but I do recognize that there is, there is some, there is something good in this movie. It is, it is a smart movie. Um, I, it, I just think, as I, I have to admit, what Britt says. It kind of like what this whole thing with like the psychoanalysis and all oh, your you're you're wanting sex for this reason and you, it, like psychoanalysis is so out now and I guess yeah. it was a thing in the seventies. Everyone's you know on the couch with their analysts. Give me a fucking break with this shit. <laughs> it's just like it's not it doesn't. Dave, don't move anything. to New York. <laughs> it's still going on. <laughs> Here's the thing: Every I day. live here. I yeah. live here, and I do comedy in Brooklyn five nights a week, and. You know, these are my people. And this is the equivalent of, you know, making a movie about like hipsters in Brooklyn today. (laughs) And it's like this kind of just self-important like, oh, thank God for the intellectuals for telling us how to feel. And like that's that's I think I get. Yeah, I just get upset when things are pretentious. I don't like it. However, I did really like The Lobster. I oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's okay, this very, like it. Yeah, you can. you can. You can be wrong about it, but that's for sure. <laughs> that's your choice. It's, yeah. it's, it, everyone's entitled. There are wrong opinions, and that's cool. I kind of yeah. needed that film so much. Uh, what else was I going to say? Dad, God, if they were to reboot Annie Hall right now, it would be Michael Sarah's Woody Allen. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. That's such a good, that's such Thank an accurate you. 
Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll give you a better one, which I think is Midnight in Paris. Okay. You take the Woody Allen, you know, brain, but you put it in a likable, you know, more uh, just a more likable person. And Owen Wilson. And it, it, in Owen Wilson, and it works much much better. I, I love Midnight in Paris, um, mm-hmm. and, well, and I think and I think it works so well for that reason. Yep, we get to stare at Owen Wilson's crooked nose for an hour and a half, just like I get to stare at Kirsten Dunst's snaggled tooth in Spider-Man films, too. But hey, we'll get to that in a hot second. These notes brought to you by guttingthesacredcow.com. And don't forget, we love those five-star ratings, two or three sentence reviews, wherever you listen to podcasts. They help the algorithm for the love of Pete. <laughs> notes? <laughs> I don't know. Got to gotta mix it up here. I was saying for the love of Christ. Notes, Woody Allen is... 40 in this he doesn't look a day under 67 <laughs> he it's looks crazy. like i'm 46 he's four he was 41 when this film was made Ugh. boy this is how we've aged he's Rough. aged like seafood on a july afternoon in <laughs> atlanta <laughs> woody allen and poindexter from revenge of the nerds are long lost brothers prove me wrong mm-hmm I can't deal with Nebishi neurotics. I'm hoping that this isn't 90 minutes of this, but I'm really banking on a long shot here, aren't I? As I wrote that down, minute three. Yeah, you know, it. there was an appeal for that, and I don't think there's just any room for that in our culture anymore. We're just over I, that person. Again, again, go to Brooke, go to Williamsburg. And, you open <laughs> and I will never. <laughs> I, well, I'm, I'm with you. That's why I don't go there. <laughs> Next one. I love the 70s leather jackets that those Goombas have on while asking for his autograph. Last next time we see those leather jackets are Donnie Brasco, Goodfellas, and Steven Seagal's Out for Justice. Yeah. Hey, it's Elvis Singer over here. Anyone seen Richie? Anyone know why I did Bobby Lupo? I'm going to keep coming back till someone remembers seeing Richie. That is a guilty pleasure. I will die on that hill. God, you know, not to undermine your case any further, is it, he's always looking down on everyone but yet is always is is at the same time sort of um like defensive about himself i don't know there's there's like a there's like a conflict there where he's he's always criticizing everyone but yet he's he's like um he can't be bothered with with anything i don't know it, it I, I feel like i just love trying to i no. messed up what i'm trying to say dave i hate dave i hate improv as much as every other stand-up comic does and i'm gonna yes and you i gotta laugh out of you i knew you i would get a laugh out of you <laughs> woody oh. allen is as you said looking down on everybody but ironically he's always looking up when talking to people because he's so goddamn short ha huh. boy see that's good thanks for the safe Get You're welcome, out. pal. Listen, I'll, I'll never leave you hanging out there. The guy behind Woody Allen at the movie theater perfectly encompasses every queef movie critic reviewer that I read on this podcast. And that guy is Woody Allen, just not as nebishy. Oh! <laughs> oh. Who yeah. watches The Watchmen? That's what I say. Woody breaking the fourth wall is way less entertaining than Ferris Bueller when breaking the fourth wall and a lot less fun than the Kool-Aid man breaking a brick wall. That one didn't hit. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to wait. I wrote it down as one. I smirked. I go, all right. <laughs> but I, but I, but that fourth wall business, that didn't hit for me. I go, ah, no. not as good. Again, I saw Ferris Bueller before I saw this, but this just didn't have that kind of, ah, appeal you don't have that desire to to, sh- to have someone shot down publicly or anything like that you know someone oh, i love out. i love shitting on people in public especially when they have dumb opinions but well, the what way if you could bring done- in the the McLuhan character to, i mean that, that that's kind of satisfying i think no it's cute was it's such a niche was- thing though right was the payoff? I mean, it's, okay. Oh, it's Marshall McLuhan. All right, cool. It's like hey special guest star david hasselhoff like all right whatever <laughs> yeah i, I believe see- go ahead sorry Brittany. No, I see the appeal. And like, that's why I said that's something that I, that's a quote, even though I couldn't quote it, but like that sticks out to me. It was like, you know, a fun moment. Um, but yeah, payoff. I don't know. I'm also, and I might be really in the minority here. I don't love those moments. Uh, like I, I absolutely adored the new Barbie movie, but I, there was this moment and I don't know if I'm spoiling anything where they uh, like acknowledge that Margot Robbie as an actress is like too hot for what they're saying. And I just like, it takes me out of it a little mm. bit. I'm like, see Barbie. Yeah. Well, anyways, I don't yep. know. Or that, yep. or like sometimes, sometimes breaking the fourth wall doesn't do it for me is mm. probably what I'm saying. Right. And in, in, in dribs and drabs. 
I yeah. believe someone as good looking as Diane Keaton is attracted to Woody Allen. Like I believe Patrick Swayze would fall for that border collie, Jennifer Gray and Dirty Dancing <laughs> over <laughs> Cynthia Rhodes. Cut that bullshit. Whoa. That that doesn't happen. Oh man. Stop it. Go on. No for one's it. believing that. Um, going I after- like how you take the perspective. <laughs> Patrick Swayze okay. there. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer <laughs> Gray is Patrick Gray's over here. <laughs> oh, she's cute in her own way. No, she's not. Yeah, she's got a look. I mean, the nose is big. That's fine. Oh, really? She looks she like can... Sandy Eagle from the Muppets. No thanks. Okay, next. <laughs> she moves, uh, she's got good hip movement. The, oh, good. That's like saying, oh, the, or, you know, I got a friend for you. Well, are they hot? Is she hot? Is he hot? Well, I think they're pretty funny. Uh. No. <laughs> This is, Brittany, you stole this right from under my nose. Oh, uh, this is the quintessential nerd slash ugly guy who writes a movie in hopes of landing a woman. This was, yeah. this is the origin story of that happening. I and mean, you have to buy into this. Yeah. Well, we're going to get into that right about now. How was, by the way, actually, one, one little, one little rest stop here. Brittany, this is for you. How is Woody Allen calling himself a stand up comic? When he doesn't want to follow another comic that's doing well and the room is hot, that is pure. That doesn't happen. You never want to follow the band. You want to follow the comic who did well and ride the wave. That Yeah, you want to ride the heat. Bingo. Had a real problem with that. Don't like that. 16 minutes in and I've already yelled out at my TV, shut up four different times at Woody <laughs> Allen. <laughs> He's talked himself out of more sex than 17-year-old Kevin Goatee did. <laughs> Call me obtuse, but I've never, ever, ever had the need to have a long discussion with my wife or an ex-girlfriend uh, about former relationships, walking away. I mean, I'll ask you, Brittany, is that the equivalent of throwing sawdust and a sponge between a lady's legs? Yeah, it's there's time and place. But we don't need, I mean, it's like, what are we doing here at length? And no, no, we don't need to do that. I'm finding it extremely hard to buy that Woody Allen not had one, but two women that married him. What deprogramming slash grooming techniques did he use to land these women? Well, Shelly Duvall. I mean, let's be honest there. I get in that in a second. Don't you worry. (laughs) Okay. Woody. Yeah. Woody Allen has the charm of Hunter Biden while resembling a ginger praying mantis. I love that so much. I wrote it down twice. (laughs) This film must be a psychoanalyst wet dream. I am so glad I am forced not to pay 500 a session to witness this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) After her tennis game with Woody Allen, Diane Keaton is dressed like she's doing her first improv show. (laughs) I love it. I really do. By the way, her her improv troop name. I created one out of thin air. Are you ready? Yes, and a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> Diane Keaton reminds me of a girl that I went out with on a date who said, I shouldn't have a second drink while I'm on my psych meds. Nice. Guess who went to the bathroom and never came back? <laughs> uh, out the window? Oh, please. Oh, no, just out the back door. Okay. <laughs> Minute 33, and I've smirked three times. This is the equivalent of a baseball player getting two hits and 29 at bats. Mm-mm. Riddle me this. Um, This is not my genre, so I'm going to need a little bit of help from you guys. A rom-com is supposed to have laughs, and the main character should, should be a tiny bit endearing by the end of the film. Am I right? I would agree. I hate watching, whether it's TV shows or movies, where the main character is not endearing to me. I had to stop watching Girls because I could not find any character that i liked it's i can't do that and that's probably mm. also why i don't like this movie woody allen's i, can't, oh, sorry, I differ you there i differ okay. there because i think i don't know i mean endearing i don't know but i think the self-reflection um just sort of about life and loss i found it moving um and he, he's just sort of thinking about he he lost her and he knows he totally fucked up um and that's just sort of he's just who he is. He's sort of just real. I like he's realizing I'm I suck, but I'm not going to change. And I lost the best woman in my life. All that is fine. And that's all fine and well. But my problem is very easy. At no point does he give her any ammunition for her to fall in love with him. No, he's not funny. He's not likable. He's not sensitive. He's not caring. He's not fun to be around. It's a 
fucking chore to listen to these diatribes in the middle of, hey, you know what? Why don't you take your pants off? Like, well, hold on a second. Let's talk about the Nazis in 1942. There's <laughs> never, <laughs> it's never, it's like that guy who's always, and that used to be me, always on. This motherfucker never takes a snooze from yeah. being a neurotic shitbag or uh, someone fun. There, there's never an endearing trait, not one singular moment. Not one person can walk on and go, I like him because of X. It's yeah. I can relate to him because you're again a neurotic sociopath, nebbish. Okay, that's your own thing, but it's not there's not one trait where you're like, I get why she digs him. Nope, not buying it. Yeah, he like sort of expects the whole world to just bend to him. And right. when they don't, he yeah, I, I would agree with that. By the way, but she can we talk about creepy little skeevy Paul Simon in this movie? <laughs> we'll get yeah. so hold on. Right, we'll get okay. <laughs> Let me get through these. Woody <laughs> Allen. Woody Allen's character is a, as annoying as a Dallas Cowboys fan who paints his face and re- wears head to toe paraphernalia while all having an elaborate story about how he was always a Cowboy fan despite living in the Northeast before they won Super Bowl in the nineties. That's what an annoying shit he is to me. Yeah. <laughs> Very specific reference, but I get yeah, it. I know yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> watching this is for you, Britt. You and I watching Diane Keaton sing in that club with all the people not paying attention struck a chord with me with doing stand up in the same type of venues. Nothing like hearing someone loudly order dessert while you're setting up a punchline. Absolutely. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> How do you do that? Do you need support from your partners, guys? What do you mean, partners? We're, 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 it's one on one, bro. One on eight. Yeah, buddy. This is this no, is I mean, like, when because, like, I was thinking, like, Alvi didn't really seem to oh. like, give a shit about, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. How, how, how much of a role does that play for you guys? Well, I'm like, it's really nice to have a supportive partner for some of those shows that I know are going to be sparsely attended. I'm like, don't worry about it, don't mm-hmm. come. You know, I'm fine to do that on my own. But if I got home and it was like, yeah, it was kind of a, it was kind of rough or whatever. Like, yeah, I, I would like some support. Yeah. Did 20 minutes of eat my dick tonight? How was your night? Yeah. <laughs> I did smirk. I did smirk. This is a New York thing. I did smirk when Woody when Woody Allen rolls his eyes when Diane Keaton ordered pastrami on white with mayo. For that's like you Midwest and Southerners who have garbage taste buds who order Papa John's pizza and then douse it in ranch dressing. (laughs) Disgusting. That's like Woody (laughs) Allen watching him tolerate that atrocity shows the true sign of a man thinking only with his dick. (laughs) It's like, she's so hot. I don't give a shit. She's going to fuck up this sandwich. (laughs) We we all know it's pastrami on rye with mustard. We all know that. Obviously. Well, well, okay. Woody putting Woody Allen putting the moves on Diane Keaton in the bedroom is like Pepe Le Pew and Ezra Miller hanging out in front of a high school. Say say this film is old by using a quote from it by not saying that this film is old. Are you ready? Mm. When Woody Allen says as a stand up, college kids are a great audience. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, because they're the worst audience now. Now they're, now they're worse women celebrating a birthday or a bachelorette party at a comedy club because the show should focus on me. I don't know <laughs> why that's a popular activity. To me, I'm like, you need to be quiet for an hour and a half. What are you doing? Yeah, eight women are not going to be quiet for 90 minutes. Who should no. go? In a pink cowboy hat? Get out of here. <laughs> Especially when penis straws are present. That is just yeah. a recipe for loud, uh, raucous noise. I got yeah. a question for Britt. Was so is girls the you mentioned that if we'd flip the gender roles? Yeah. I feel like we're getting a lot of that recently. Um, and none of it's very good. Um here's go here's ahead. my thing that I could tell you like a good uh mirror of it that is it's not a movie though, it's a show that I would say there is a protagonist who is messy, neurotic. Uh, has, you know, mental health stuff, trauma, all of that. And at the same time, she is one of the most, you know, endearing characters I can think of uh, and does way better of a job than neurotic ass Woody Allen is Fleabag, is mm. Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Fleabag. I it tapped is- out on that. I tried I tried several episodes oh. and I couldn't do it. I've never seen it, but I've heard, I, I always hear good things about it, but. Yeah. It's one of my favorite shows. And like, she's not a divorcee or anything, but like unlucky in love, like all of that. And at the same time, it's just like, she's not preaching at you the whole time. You know, I don't like, I don't care who it is, what gender, whatever. Like if someone's just talking at me, mm. I'm not going to like it. No. I didn't hate it. I just didn't. I was apathetic. ago. I, I just, there's no hook here. There's no hook for me with that. Uh, I just didn't find it interesting. 
Woody Allen thinks everybody in this film hates Jews. No, you narcissistic, deflecting mega dildo. It's not because you're Jewish. It's because you're an annoying twat. That's why. <laughs> yes. So I think this is sort of what I was trying to say earlier, where the, like it's sort of contradictory because he's always on, in on the anti-Semitism, but then he has like he'll have the conversation about what is it? Uh, everyone everyone thinks New York is full of gay Jewish pornographers, and even I right. think of it like that sometimes. So it's like. I don't know what your level of self awareness is. <laughs> like, no. you know. Or was he going for a shock value joke? If it is, that was a that was a weak reach. Yeah, not every joke. Yeah. Like the jokes are funny, but they don't all connect into it. They're just hits that don't necessarily like continue on. I think these are shots on goal that are nowhere near net. How about that for a <laughs> hockey analogy for everybody? Well, Chris, Christopher Walken's in this. I would love it if he stuck his grandfather's watch from Pulp Fiction up Woody's asshole. Nice. Hell yeah. Bang. Bang. <laughs> Okay. That was that, that that went that went that went that yeah. This uncomfortable hunk of metal in his ass. <laughs> in his ass. <laughs> I've hit the, the time display button at least four times, and oh, we're only 45 minutes in. Shit. Uh -oh. Wrote oh, that no. down. <laughs> this entire film has been a therapy session between a woman and a man who needs a squat on a lit Roman candle. Cardi B interpreting Shakespeare has more allure than this tale does. Oof. The animated scene with the evil queen, a complete waste of time. Laugh counter time. Okay, uh, I have two laughs in, and we are 65 minutes in at this point. Shelly Duvall goes out with him. Oh, hopefully she shrieks nonstop in his face like she did in The Shining when he starts overanalyzing everything and calls everyone a Nazi. That's That should be her defense mechanism. <laughs> that was her about that was her entire role in the shining just shrieking as israel pointed out it's because uh it's because uh stanley kubrick broke her mentally this yeah i was abusing her basically yeah well you got to get that performance yeah shelly uh duvall has jorge posada's ears and rabbit teeth that's a combo that a mad scientist <laughs> would in a lab would never put together <laughs> oh man <laughs> you, yeah you definitely had much more than i did thank you <laughs> I've laughed two more times in this film than I did with Napoleon Dynamite and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Mm -hmm. Two more. I can't believe you guys didn't talk about this one. What is the quintessential scene in this film if you would have asked me before I rewatched this? Everyone talks about the infamous sneezing coke scene. What yes. a buildup for such a mediocre payoff. I no, no stakes whatsoever. No one got pissed. No one said what happened. We, we, we spent all this money for a coke. There was nothing. It was just a chew. Cut. Okay. All right. That that I was put a, it down on my checklist. Really? I mean, I and here's the thing checklist. that 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 was not in the script. That was uh, he actually legit sneezed, and that it was like the out the take, and they're like, we're we're going with it. But that's good. Say that as a fun fact, yeah, he he did that. There's our fun fact number number six. The makeup. <laughs> also, what a fucking idiot! I'm like, <laughs> what a rookie. Hold your breath, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sneezing on the prop coke. Use. Let's, let's try this again. Use a quote. To say this movie is old without saying it's old. You ready? Mm. There's no crime or mugging in L.A. <laughs> also, was that even true of the time? This is the 70s, no. right? Yeah. yeah. Hello, the Joker Charlie, running around. The Charlie Manson, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. On, on Yellow Drive. 90 minutes of assuming that 80% of people that he meets are anti-Semitic has long run its course. This film had three to four lines that were amusing. That is it. Woody Allen is one of the worst leading men I've ever seen. And I can't possibly find how people find him even funny or even tolerable. So why did it, the Academy nominate him for best actor? And why did it beat Star Wars? God damn it. That's crazy. <laughs> well, listen, Pulp but Fiction lost the fucking answer? Forrest Gump for Christ. I don't know. Because we all listen. You guys forget your bit. The, 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 the focal point is simple. Hollywood voters for the Academy Awards are a bunch of dickbags. They always make shitty choices. How many films in the last 40 years were you going, are you fucking Green Book? Good. Was it best picture? No. You're welcome. Thank you. I was about to say that. The Founder. That film was neglected. All these other films that never lost. Shakespeare in Love? Are you out of your goddamn mind beats? Private Ryan? What world are we in? I, LA Confidential loses. Are you? I forgot what it lost to, but it lost. It, it's crime. That's that why. was Forrest Gump, right? No, 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 no. Forrest Gump, Pulp Fiction, Shawshank, all the same year. That's I a think wild it, 
That's a wild year, though. And you I guys, know. I want to listen to the Shawshank episode because I do love that movie, unfortunately. Uh, well, don't say unfortunately. It's a goddamn well, classic. I I mean, yeah, I'm interested to hear what someone said about it. But yeah. um, yeah, no, I'm just plugging other episodes. Of your that's show. that. I have no problem with that. You want to give me free promotion <laughs> on my own podcast? That's cool. Yeah, uh, that's back, cool. back to Woody. It's uh, OK. His later films are fucking great. Match point. Love it. Vic, Vicky Christina Barcelona. Fantastic. Midnight yeah. in Paris. The aforementioned solid. Love Blue it. Ja- Blue Jasmine. Great. Even Hannah and her sister is despite him. Woody Allen is the same horseshit, annoying little fucking character. He is as one <laughs> note. He, thank you. Himself. He, is, he is as one note as palpable Seth, anger. Oh, I can't stand him. He is as one note as Seth Rogen and Stifler, but at least those two have made me laugh on multiple occasions. This guy barely gets me to crack a smile. Yeah, I good, hate this good point that Rogen. It's like eh, it's like the laugh. There's nothing there anymore. Forty year old virgin was it. Thank That's you. It. We're moving yeah. on. Yep. I absolutely hate this movie so goddamn much. It befuddles me that people make Woody their comedy hero. It makes me nauseous to see people emulating his sound, his material, and Christ Almighty, his look when you're out doing uh, shows and mics or whatever. His character, completely unlikable, mostly unfunny, and pure cringy watching him in romantic encounters with women. We get it. You're neurotic. You're awkward. It just... Uh, no, but no one's buying that you're betting women at this frequency. No one. The, <laughs> this is a film for people who have shitty taste in humor and sound like exactly like that annoying asshole in line at the movie theater we talked about before. I almost, <laughs> almost want to give this movie half a point like Israel did with Rocky Horror Picture Show. But this, I smirked a few times. The story had a middling arc and Diane Keaton is, is was, was a fucking joy. I will give this a one out of 10. This film fucking Great. stinks. Woo. Stinks. Oof. I had size. When you chose this, I go, oh boy, I got to sit through this. Oh, 90 minutes. It could be that bad. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> no. And I, I will say like the way that, that, uh, you know, people say like women's certain women's voices are like grating or they have that vocal fry. I'm like, mm-hmm. listen to Woody Allen for 90 minutes. You mm-hmm. want to blow your brains out. Right. Like, his just his voice and his mannerisms and everything like oh and like you said you know just beating us over the head with it you're neurotic you're bad in bed you're bad with women it's like can he, he should have gotten at least one w on the board to to convince us <laughs> of any redeeming quality he had but he doesn't have any and i think it is autobiographical and i think that's how he is in real life and that's it he got me uh, a pharaoh yeah roofied maybe i don't know that's too easy yeah, too easy of a joke i wrote i also wrote down don't ever show this movie to someone who hates Jews. You're only making the case for them. <laughs> the case for anti-Semitism. Yeah, you are because this, this, if you if you not if you hate Jewish people, this is going to be a problem for you. Oh no! And I'm like, we're not like that. Like, don't. <laughs> yeah. Do you have to explain yourself a lot, Brit? With people like I'm half Jewish. Hold on, hold on. Not like Woody Allen. Just forget sh- he's not one of us. I'm like, yeah. I went to the KKK rally and they were playing Andy Hall. Yeah. Well, you are- <laughs> You are in Clearwater, Dave. I'm sure there's a lot of that. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I've been to Clearwater. It's a nice, it's a nice town. My buddy goes to the Hulk Hogan karaoke on Monday nights all the time and loves it. Beautiful. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, listen, let's get ready to hear the old metaphorical hand job from the critics because you know it's coming. Critics, five star reviews. Oh. Hey, wait, where's the Paul Simon bit? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, DQ. Oh, yes, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Go well, ahead. Let's go ahead. just. Let's, could you think of a slimier character on a movie? For some, for a cameo, I mean, not really becoming. He's just. He's like greasy looking. He's. He's like. He's got this comb over that's down below his his ears. He's shorter. He standing. He's shorter than Diane Keaton sitting at the bar. <laughs> He Woody, looks Woody, 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 Woody Allen wanted someone on equal footing, I guess. Maybe Tom, maybe Tom Cruise will get a next casting call from Woody. <laughs> but, Just I mean, terrible. At least, at least he has a better face. Literally, Paul Simon looks like Lord Farquaad. He is so <laughs> hideously ugly. And the thought that that uh Diane Keaton would be with either of them, I can't, I it's just it's crazy. It, I, I was wonder, scre- yeah, I was screaming, that doesn't happen. I don't know. <laughs> That's my that's our thing on this podcast. I, but he that, was like a music producer, though, right? So maybe you know. Well, I mean that I mean, in Hollywood, we all know that that happens a lot. But you're like, uh, I, how is it two two different characters in the same film, male, are getting a woman very attractive, not a yeah. you know whatever, and they are just repulsive inside and out without any redeeming qualities. That's what just blew my shit for this film. 
Sorry. Any other I points think, at all? I think you're right. I, I think he was cast. Well, maybe he was a friend. You never know. And maybe the audience maybe felt differently then. But I, I do suspect that this was this was like competition. Because if you had shown any other man who was, you know, six foot tall and right. normal looking, you'd be like, well, fuck, of course you should go with that guy. Even, even, right. even, it even, Woody, sense. Yeah, yeah, Woody's bearded buddy in Manhattan. You're like, all right, that dude, yeah, I, I like can, him. Yeah. I could, yeah. I could see him run around, you know, getting some, uh, getting some ladies, you know, that's sure. That's not, all right. We're going to close the book on Paul Simon. We're good. <laughs> good. All right. Just making sure. All right. <laughs> back to those critics. Five star reviews. One of the most brilliant and inventive comedies. Woody Allen's Annie Hall is, is his most grounded and accomplished work. Bittersweet and hysterical. Annie Hall is one of the most quintessential romantic comedies. It's not romantic to me. No. It is bittersweet. That's the right word. In sure. sure. <laughs> I'll agree with that part. Sure. I Next one. Bitter. Yeah. A, a bittersweet love affair. Even though it's played for laughs, it contains more truth than most on-screen romances. I mean, if you strip away the insanity, there's, you know, the hits and misses. Yeah, I mean, I do. I, I got a soft spot for it. I do. I, if you strip it, away all of that, yes, the, like, you know, things don't work out and then they do and then they don't work out or whatever, like that kind of thing. But yeah, it's only the truth if you're dating someone like that, which I hope you're not. <laughs> By the way, this is why I keep yelling for the AFI. It needs to be revised every five years. Any Hall number 35 on the AFI 100. Ooh. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. It should be revised when new uh, things come out. Yeah. I was really, ha really pleased and happy to see them uh, upwardly revised Raging Bull. That was that was welcome for me. Good. Uh, I don't know what, where, what it went from where to where, but if it went up, then that's I, the right. I think answer. It's like number five or six or something. I'm not going to go that far. Hold on. Let's slow down. Five I or would. six. I'm not, I would. And if, hey, if, any, if anyone goes near that fucking film, I will. I'm, I've got my. Uh oh. My bow and arrow. <laughs> I've got my sword. Look I, look, I like it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, it's very good. Is, is it number it's five? A goddamn masterpiece. No. That's great. Well, that's solid. I'm saying it's not high, but it's good. Uh, any, any, it's solid. I like it. It's good. I'm not. Like, you, 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 you make it sound like I'm taking a shit on it. I'm, I'm doing a Cleveland steamer on Raging Bull. I'm, I'm not See, that's dumb. how. That's how I feel about that movie. Is, okay. Yeah. So solid good. just doesn't do it for me. I'm ready right. to go to blows. Any hall, any hall is intensely felt, hilariously, hilariously realized film about his own love affair with actress Diane Keaton is Alan's masterpiece, and it's a masterpiece among comedy films. Mm. I can name a, a hundred other movies that made me laugh more than that. The first eighty seconds of Caddyshack, <laughs> no, when when the Gopher is on, which I hate, when the Gopher is on, is funnier than yeah. this film. Well, how, well, the bit in the beginning about the kid who's depressed about the universe ending, that kind of, that kind of got a laugh for me. I'm glad it did. Critics. Okay. <laughs> Critics. <laughs> one star reviews. Critics. One star reviews. The snark is high. Sorry, DQ. I love it. <laughs> Alan is our most literate comic and our most comic literateur. I already hate this person, even though I agree with him. As his <laughs> readers of his humorous sketches know. But his new pain, but his new film is painful in three separate ways as unfunny comedy, poor movie making and embarrassing self-revelation. See, I don't agree with that. And I and I hate oh, this film. Do the three good. don't fit unfunny. The sure. But photography is good. Yeah, it's, it's not, not bad. Poor movie movie. No, it's, no, it's not. And uh, self-revelation isn't supposed to be embarrassing, but this is just. It's no, insistent. It, it insists upon itself, as Peter Griffin said about <laughs> Godfather. And it's just annoying. God damn. Okay, next one. I know that this is an exaggerated character for comedic effect in the movie, but I really have lost all my patience for it. Amen, brother or sister. Yeah, yeah. I felt it. I definitely felt it. A soft, fuzzy, mildly diverting letdown. Mildly, the way this is blown up. No, my ass. This is on yeah. Mount Rushmore. This is a major letdown. <laughs> and this next one, I think it really hits at home. I imagine it was more groundbreaking when it came out. Completely fair. Yeah. Amazon. Amazon. Five star reviews. Oh, here we go. Showed this to my 17 year old daughter. And as we were watching it, my husband and I realized how many catchphrases from this movie are part of our lives. I think that if Woody Allen read this review, he'd ask what her daughter's phone number is. Yeah, probably. <laughs> 17 year old. That was a good. I like that. Love this film. <laughs> Despise Woody Allen for who he is and what he did. Signed, Andrew Tate. Wow. 
I said five stars. Signed, Frank Rizzo. R I Z Z O. Oh no! I like your <laughs> Amazon one star reviews. Nice. Well, my opinion of this movie hasn't changed since it first came out in the seventies. I was a twenty something then and a sixty something now. Not funny now. Well, not. Well, sorry, not funny then. Not funny now. What I really struggle with is how this movie won an Academy Award. Why would anyone find a movie with very little plot line and endless self serving dialogue entertaining is beyond me. Thank you. Next, Alan's constant whining is absolutely torturous, as is Keaton's disjointed schizophrenic portrayal of her character. Seriously, we all, boys and girls included, wanted to slap her even more than Woody. I don't know about that. We eventually decided that both characters tied Jar Jar Binks for most on most annoying screen persona in history. Oh yes, we, that's good. Yes, we all I put Napoleon Dynamite in that bunch too. Another someone who needs chemical sterilization. <laughs> yes, we all got the jokes. Don't think for a second that Woody's sense of humor is accessible because getting it in quotes is painfully easy. Appreciating it, however, must be a torture test required to be initiated into some, some snotty film club or something. But I mean, hung y- hot young Christopher Walken, I guess, signed Natalie Wood. Or Britt Miggs. <laughs> I love the young Christopher Walken. <laughs> Next one. The self-involved nebbish hijinks of the writer-director Woody Allen in this film convinced the Academy to waste the 19, 1977 <laughs> Best Picture Oscar. <laughs> yep. They snub Star Wars, the much more consequential and influential film for this creep pseudo romantic fantasy life put on celluloid. Thanks, Hollywood creepy producers and directors, for kissing your own asses instead of acknowledging a watershed achievement in cinema. So please, if you're looking for a romantic comedy, try Sleepless in Seattle or Hitch. Well, I, I don't know if you kind of lost me in there at the end, but Hitch well is done. Amusing. Hitch well, is done. Amusing. Well, well done there before it. Well, the Last, point about Star Wars, I mean, come I mean, on. It, it, this this is this is the Yankees versus the Mets we're talking here. JV versus the you know good one. Quirky is the best word to describe this movie. It is all too silly too often. It was like a series of one liner jokes written by a wannabe stand up comedian in the Jewish section of New York. Which is the Jewish section of New York? Can someone clear that for me? It's kind of all of it. I don't. Know I'm just gonna say ah, it's your question. <laughs> Uh, very narrow audience appeal and not really laugh out loud by viewers more like a little smile occasionally the talking to the camera was abused repeatedly annoying it amazes me that people find Woody Allen good in this movie maybe good in comparison to all his other film roles this very well is the case I found this to be a waste of my time that I will never get back signed Richard Lewis (laughs) and now (laughs) I asked chat GPT to write some jokes DQ's Oh, night. Ch- let's see if chat gpt can finally get off the slide and get off its 0 for 21 start against me chat gpt what do you have for jokes about annie hall let's see annie hall teaches us that love is like a great slice of new york pizza delicious messy and leaves you questioning your choices afterwards wow let's see if the slide whistle works now all right. No, it's still gone. I know you want that thing to work so bad, and it's not. I try. I know it's not. Damn it! It's not picking up. I put it right off the camera. Well, maybe God. you got to try to. You got to get it right on the mic. No, I did. No. <laughs> I, I like it failing more. This is carrot top in his early years, guys. That's my impression. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chat GPT, what's next? Woody Allen's character, Alvy Singer, is so neurotic that even his therapist probably needs therapy after all of these sessions. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad. Well, that is going to go whole meta thing because then the, the therapist is even more annoying than Woody Allen. He's going through his thing and he's, you know, 10 times divorced. Forget it. Britt, here's a pure proof that Chat GPT won't taking over any uh, jobs anytime yeah. soon. You know you're in for a unique movie experience when the protagonist breaks the fourth wall more times than a construction worker with a sledgehammer. That's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad. You know what? It's that not good. Not worse. <laughs> What's that? It's scary that that's not worse. Like I see, I'm like, give it a couple of years and I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. You know what that joke needed? More words. Yeah, more. Yeah, God. definitely more word economy. Yeah. <laughs> Chat Skynet slash Chat GPT twenty two sorry zero <laughs> KG twenty two. Oh my god! Dave Quist did Brit Miggs gut the sacred cow? I think she did. 
I'm willing to step aside and allow this cow to be slaughtered. All right. I will. Yes, I agree on uh, a point of contingency, though, Your Honor. This film gut itself. She just assisted suicide at <laughs> this thing. She Kevorkian did is what she did. She said, let me open up a vial of some kind of cholera, open it up near the mouth yes. of this cow, breathe it I in. And- like, I feel like I had to say something because no one else is. I mean, aside from those one star reviews, but like publicly, we have to stop calling this one of the greatest comedies of our time because it's sister, you and I are simpatico. But we yeah, are- I mean, a hero needed to emerge. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm going to say something uh, also controversial. You know, it's said that it paved the way for Harry Met Sally when Harry Met Sally. And uh, I don't love that movie either. (laughs) Hey, here's a secret, too. I don't care for it either. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's It's propped up. It's propped up. By the way, by the way, since we just said that, we'll make this very brief. Billy Crystal is Woody Allen watered down in that film. He's the same character. Like, how does she want to bang him? There's Meg nothing Ryan. there. Ryan. Right. And in her prime. Billy Crystal, in right. her prime. And right. Billy Crystal. Get right. out of here. And his personality blows. It's not, he's not yeah. even funny. I just, that, that blows my mind. Blows my mind. Why was that a thing for like 70s and 80s? How do know. these men get, well, Billy Crystal is funny, and, but um, much funnier. You're right. Yeah. 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 But, you're asking me to do that. It it would be the equivalent of, uh, okay, here we go. George Clooney saying, hey, Lena Dunham, let's fuck. Nope, not happening. I And then I, she's I, the she's the lead, right? And we're supposed to take her side. <laughs> no exactly. Way. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I would no. agree with you. I think Thank it's you. weird. Doesn't make sense. That's going to do it for a uh, gutting and a half of a... Uh, <laughs> of uh, of when Harry met Sally and of Annie Hall. Yeah, we, yeah, we did a little stab I'll come, in here. I'll come back and trash when Harry met Sally. <laughs> yeah, it's one scene, kids. One scene is all that movie is known for. Nothing else. And by the way, it's his mother delivering that one line. Kevin Goatee, Dave Quist, Pretty Big saying, "Thank you all." Later.